I've done a number of experiments with the driver transfer market on F1 Manager 2023, but today we're going to take the experiments to the track. And let's see what happens when everyone on the grid is terrible. Hello everyone and welcome to my latest F1 Manager experiment and we are with Alpine and both our drivers are rubbish. No, Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly haven't been replaced. They've been put as a rating of zero. And that's the story across the board. Everybody is rated zero. Now, this is actually the second attempt I've made at recording this because the first time I edited all the driver's stats to make them terrible, they ended up leaving their teams. They got ditched by the teams and replaced by F2 talent that could actually drive the cars. Um, so what we're doing today is essentially finding out what happens when you put all the drivers on track when they've got no skill. So as you can see at the moment I'll, in editing, I'll bring up Pierre Gasly's um, edited stats. All of his attributes are at zero, but his aggression is 99, and that's the same for everybody. So if we go back in here and have a look at Ocon, his aggression is high. A driver with high aggression will drive closer to competitors and attempt to overtake more often. But driving closely to competitors increases the chance of being involved in a race incident like a crash. So what I can read into that is that with absolutely no skill and all of the aggression, our drivers are just going to crash into anyone and anything. And around Jeddah, which is where we're going to be doing this race because I'm recording this on race day for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, which is going to start in less than two hours at the time of recording, I thought that was the most appropriate thing to do. And also high-speed track and walls. So <laughs> we could have a lot of safety cars in this race. We could have multiple red flags. I'm not going to have a look at qualifying or practice because that might spoil it. We're going to sim that and we're going to find out what happens when you put 20 ultra-aggressive drivers with no skill on a street circuit that's super high-speed. So I think I've given you enough of a rundown of what's going to happen. Let's get to the grid and just see how this pans out. We've simulated qualifying and practice and Pierre Gasly is actually starting this race third and Esteban Ocon is going to start it eighth. So already this is blowing my mind because well Ferrari on par with Charles Leclerc not a surprise. Alonso P2 not really a surprise. Our performance is a surprise. But the Red Bulls are 6th and 7th. What's happening in the lower half of the grid? Well, McLaren aren't very good in the early stages of this game. Um, but yeah, two Alpines in the top 8. That wouldn't happen in 2024. Good thing this is 2023. I think what we're going to find is either not very much happens because all the drivers are rubbish. Or it's going to be absolute chaos. Kind of hoping for chaos. Let's pray for chaos and do a motor race. Green flag at the back then. We're going to get four and five red lights. Look out for Gasly on the left here. The lights are out. The race is on. And feels like they're painfully slow away. But Gasly looks like he's going into P2. We're actually focusing on Ocon. We shouldn't be focusing on him just at the moment because Gasly is going into P2. Against the driver he replaced at Alpine, Fernando Alonso. Oh, the irony. But everyone's safely through turn one thus far. No chaos at the moment, but I'm sure that can all change. So the first thing we should note is that the tyre wear is incredible. We've just got to the end of lap three and we have already used 20% of our tyres. <laughs> Even Alonso on mediums has used 17%. Tire wear, because they've got no smoothness, no control, no nothing, it's it's going to be mental. I think this is going to be a multi-stop race, or we're going to see a lot of punctures. We've got our first yellow flag. Someone has crashed into Ocon. Oh my gosh. What's happened here? We've had our first incident. It involves us. It's Lance Stroll. Some would say that he doesn't have any talent as it is, but there you go. He sent out the inside. There's a little bit of carbon fiber confetti that all the other cars are just driving over and they won't get a puncture for it. Lap 10, and Daniel Ricciardo is the first driver to change tyres. 
uh, Ocon probably needs to do the same. So we'll do that here. Um, <laughs> look at the tyre. We are going to run out of tyres. That's going to be the, the thing, I think. <laughs> so we've got to get softs. I mean, these were brand new softs that we put on, I think. And we've got to get there. We've only just got them 10 laps. 11 laps, maybe. We'll get, maybe we'll get 12 or 13 out with everybody else. But Ocon is only going to get 10 out of them. So let's put on this really used set and just do like an aggressive undercut. At the moment, nothing since the Ocon collision has happened in terms of drama. It's just now everyone's going to start pitting because they're going to run out of tyre. And as, as I say that, we've now got a virtual safety car. What's happened? Charles Leclerc has crashed. He was in the lead. Charles Leclerc has done a Charles Leclerc thing and crashed when he's in the lead. Oh. Yep. You know what radio message is coming now. No! We've got a puncture. It's George Russell in the Mercedes. He's pushed his luck too far. Once you get below 30%, the tyres are likely to pop. Max Verstappen is also pushing his luck right now. Uh, he's the only other driver. Uh, Piastri as well, actually. Less than 20% left of his tyre. But that's going to cost George Russell big time. I've tried to lighten the load on Gasly's tyres, and on, our, on at least on our tyres. And look, Magnussen just going straight off the track, having just overtaken us. As the tyres get old, I think we're going to see more and more mistakes. Here's Kevin Magnussen. This isn't uncommon on the game. Kevin Magnussen does make a lot of lockups. There he goes at turn 13. And that hands P8 back to Pierre Gasly. He'll be closing up on Russell and going past him now. I've put both my drivers on medium tyres. We've got cars on all sorts of different tyres. There's people at the front on hards. All the wear rates are different because of what tyres you're on or traffic or whatever it's just it's almost impossible to keep up with what's going on in terms of the tires at the moment it's a bit like the i suppose like the qatar grand prix isn't it where they had to drive flat out and you have multi-stops but this is like the other way around the tires are the and their wear rate is the defining factor it's a bit like the original pirelli days where you you put a set of tires on you showed them a racetrack and they freaked out and they didn't want to do it and you'd have to bring them back in because they were just mortified and terrorised by the racetrack. Now the yellow flag and a virtual safety car. Is that Sonoda? Can't even see it. There he is. <laughs> There's Sonoda. There's a crash involving multiple cars. It's Albon and Sonoda who have had a bit of a collision. There we go. And oh, they've had a secondary contact. And Sonoda, they've both just driven into the wall. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I know they've got no skill, but that was just no intelligence. We're going to bring Ocon in now for the best available remaining set of soft tyres that we have. We're going to do the same with Gasly and then try and push them to the end. Maybe Alonso won't win this race. Maybe he'll need to box as well. But I, I think what we're going to see in the final few laps is a lot of drivers with punctures. I can see it already that we're going to be just sort of trickling across the line with showers of sparks because a lot of drivers have run into tyre trouble because the AI doesn't want to pit too late but we'll see Alonso approaching that perilous puncture point and they pit they've brought Alonso and Sainz in for fresh tyres to avoid exactly that scenario Another virtual safety car, and it is Esteban Ocon involved once again. He's out of the race. What the, what the so his second accident of the day, and it's with George Russell. We're up the inside, and then George... Oh, George, and then Esteban just drives into the wall. <laughs> How bizarre. And then we're just looking at a screen. <laughs> it's not a very well-placed screen, is it? That was really weird. As soon as they have an accident, they just seem to drive towards the wall. How strange. 
Another yellow flag. I think it was Hulkenberg with a lockup. Here he is. At turn 13, he's going to do exactly the same thing his teammate did. There is Magnussen in the background. And there's Hulkenberg just driving off the circuit. And it has promoted Gasly to P8. Sergio Perez then wins the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. He beats Max Verstappen. Carlos Sainz comes home in third. Alonso fourth. Who's risking a puncture? Hamilton is. In fact, he's just lost a position to Stroll. And Sargent's also risking a puncture. We should be all right here with Gasly. We'll just attack because we can pass Magnussen, actually. Let's see how this goes. Run to the final corner. DRS, we're going to send it. And we're going to pick up P7 with Pierre Gasly. Nice job, Pierre. And no one's ended up with a puncture at the end. But we have ended up with a quarter of the grid in the wall. That was a slightly more chaotic race than we might have had ordinarily, I think. Let me know what you think in the comments. Well, that was quite an interesting experiment, wasn't it? I think we can take this forward a little bit more and see what happens in the coming races. But for now, that will do. I'll see you next time. Make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on the video for me. Subscribe for more experiments and join joining in the Haas career journey that we're going on at the moment as well. You're the best fans. It's bye for now.